Happy New Year, guys! More importantly, Happy New Decade! Isn't it exciting? So, as the New Year rolls around, many of you uh, adopt New Year resolutions. Some of you write down your goals and create masterpiece vision boards and uh, digital posters. And if you do that, that is really great because research has shown that people who reflect and write down their goals periodically visit them, um, they maximize their odds of achieving those outcomes because they keep themselves accountable. The topic of today's video is something that I have been thinking about um, and hope to improve in my own life, is technology. Your assistant or has it become your master? Now, if the answer is I use it as my assistant, it makes me more productive and happier, then congratulations, you can turn me off and go do something fun. For the rest of us who are still struggling with this balance, I hope the following three steps that I plan to incorporate in my new decade also helps you as well. Step one, sign the contract. Many of you are lawyers or aspiring lawyers, so you know once that contract is signed, you are obligated to perform. Um, so let's sign a contract. You can write it on a piece of paper, put it in your desk drawer, in your purse, in your wallet, wherever it will be more helpful for you to keep yourself accountable. And the contract says, you technology are fired as my master. And from this day forward, you shall serve me as a superstar assistant. Um, so if you need a reminder, you can go and remind yourself that this is now a new contract and you're going to abide by this going forward. If you need a little extra help, you can activate certain features where on your phone, for example, an iPhone, you can see um, the amount of time you've spent, your screen time. Same thing with social media. So maybe every week you look at the report and see how well you've been doing. Are you trending downwards? So you are minimizing uh, technology time that is not serving you or are your numbers um, not where you want them to be? Step two, minimize interruptions by your brand new superstar assistant. So sure, we've hired technology now as our assistant instead of our master, but not every assistant is amazing. So how do we interact with an assistant that interrupts us all the time? So one of the tips out there is schedule times where you're going to check email or check social media. This advice to some extent is great, sure. Like, you know, make sure you don't check social media at any time of the day and you just check it once or twice a day at a previously agreed on time. But the checking email advice part, it is just really not applicable to lawyers. You know what I'm talking about, especially if you're a brand new lawyer. Responsiveness is such an important virtue. Uh, your clients expect it, your supervising attorneys expect it, and you can actually build a lot of respect and trust by being that person who writes back and say, got it, I'll be working on this. So how do we balance the virtue of uh, responsiveness against not wanting technology to just constantly be pinging us and you know distracting us? Let's say you have stepped out of work and you're at Starbucks and you're in line and um, about to get some coffee or you've taken a couple of hours to go to the dentist and emails arrive. It is absolutely great to be able to check that email. So even though you're not at work, you're able to be present and be a superstar attorney by seeing that email and maybe even responding really quickly and say, um, got it, uh, we'll get to this later this afternoon. And this way you can check off that virtual responsiveness. But a lot of times we are so used to just constantly being on, instead of being present, maybe enjoying our surroundings and taking in stimuli that can um, enhance us, uh, having a great conversation with the person next to us. Now we're on that little screen trying to type away and just um, respond substantively. So my suggestion is um, acknowledge, but then mentally, just like your assistant has come in and brought something to your attention, it doesn't mean you just drop everything and uh, go attempt to that. Take mental note of it, and then later on, when you're back at your desk, 
group that together with other emails you have to respond and then with like a bigger screen your desktop or laptop you can just give the task its due attention and also not miss out on being present in the moment that uh, you were in step three remove your brand new superstar assistant from unnecessary tasks many times we engage in an activity where this activity's primary outcome that we're looking for has nothing to do with work or technology for example if we go to the gym um, long term we probably want to live a fitter healthier more vital life um, maybe we want to minimize the odds of certain illnesses that run in our family and short term we want to feel good right so if you work out in the morning you want to have a happier more productive day or some of you work out at night and you want to sleep better so the primary outcome is not work related so if you're going to use technology for this uh, in the correct way where technology is your assistant ask yourself does the use of technology improve the primary outcome you're seeking to get from that activity. For example, if you're listening to music, maybe it gets you to um, work out harder. If you're listening to a podcast, maybe in addition to working on your physical well-being, it feeds your spirit and your emotions and after the workout, you feel much better. But it is important to really check your mood and make sure the use of that technology is not minimizing that primary outcome you're seeking or worse yet, completely neutralizing it. There was a gentleman the other day working out next to me on a treadmill and he was a tall gentleman, like maybe over six feet tall, and he was walking at 2, 2.5. And I understand sometimes we might have physical ailments and we just want to move, but we can't move that quickly. But he was on his laptop. He literally had like a, a stand with the laptop on it. And I was next to him so I could see he was filing his emails. He was composing long emails. And when he got off the treadmill, his face was unhappier and more stressed out and overwhelmed than when he got on the treadmill. Um, so check your mood. If the podcast you're listening to after you're done with your workout has you going, oh my God, I got to do this, this and this. I got to like fit this into my life. Maybe you should find a different time to listen to that podcast. Or if you're out with a friend and the purpose is to kind of distress and connect and have a conversation and engage a different part of your core, if bringing out your phone and going over pictures enhances that primary outcome, wonderful. But if you find yourself that you know, a lot of times you're using that technology as a filler, but it, it is diluting the primary outcome from the activity you're engaging in, maybe it is time to remove your assistant's technology from those activities. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I uh, hope you can use technology to make you healthier, happier, more productive, and more successful. I am in no way the master of this, just like many of you, I struggle with this, but I try to do better each day and each year. So if you have uh, any high level or detailed uh, techniques where uh, you're incorporating into your lives to make sure technology is serving you and not the other way around, please share it down below. Our law, especially our law student followers, they're the quiet type, they don't comment a lot, but they tell me that they really appreciate uh, getting these tips from myself and other attorneys and incorporating it as they start their practice. Until we meet again, stay well and thank you for listening.